We'd like to welcome you to a discussion about the boundary planning of Pleasant View Middle School for the 2022-23 school year. My name is Jamie Lusher and I have the esteemed privilege of being the Deputy Superintendent for the Southwestern City School District. My name is Robert Kramer. Uh, I'm the Data Analyst here at Southwestern City School District. So your feedback and communication about this process is very critical to our work. The anticipated outcome of our presentation tonight is to help us begin to stabilize the numbers of Pleasant View Middle School through the redistribution of approximately 150 students. Those students will be redistributed to both Norton and Brook Park Middle School, which next school year will be called Beulah Park. Currently, our enrollment at Pleasant View Middle School is 910 students, and as you can see, that is incongruent with some of our other buildings to include Brook Park Middle at 513 students and Norton Middle at 588 students. So our goal is to stabilize that enrollment and bring Pleasant View's enrollment into a place where it is in the range of the high 600s to the what we consider the low 700s when we look at enrollment. Our buildings are built to sustain about 800 students. So currently Pleasant View Middle School is well over what we would anticipate our enrollment to be to maintain the integrity of the way the buildings were constructed. And as you know, next year we will have new middle schools for our students to walk those halls. As you might imagine, the Southwestern City School District is comprised of many, many moving parts. And unfortunately, the redistricting process has had to be a part of our landscape for many years. But as a result, we have some vetted parameters that we use for this decision-making. Um, these decision-making parameters have been developed over years and time with our parents, with community stakeholders, with our staff, with our administration, and we really do believe that these parameters give us the best possible way to think about students first as we look at some of these difficult conversations that we have to have when we think about moving students as part of their learning experience. So those parameters include the first, which is to stay consistent with the vision and mission and the beliefs of our district. Two, to do what's best for the greatest number of our students. Three, to remain financially responsible. And four, our decisions must be logical and generally understandable by the public. As we move from decision to the actual boundary planning parameters, Additionally, we think about some very important variables. First, our goal is to attempt to keep our neighborhoods together. We know that our community values our community schools. We know that these students grow up together playing and having opportunities to build relationships. So it is absolutely our goal to attempt to keep those neighborhoods together. Two, we do look for and utilize natural geographic breaks and boundaries. Uh, our district has, you know, again, we are our city meets country. We have lots of geographic areas that we can utilize those boundaries to help create some natural planning parameters for our district. Three, we look to allow for projected growth. As you know, Columbus is booming and we continue to see new development and innovation in our, in our district. So we look at those projections and take those into consideration as we look at planning for the future. Four, and this is an important one, in particular this year, we want to maximize our transportation efficiency. I am proud to say that at this time, we may have late buses, but we haven't canceled any routes this school year, which is not typical if you are watching the news. We've had many of our neighboring districts have had to close school and reduce routes based on the shortage of our nation's bus drivers. For us, transportation efficiency is a real opportunity here. We can look at our boundaries, we can look at our transportation routes, which we have, and look for more efficient processes too that can maybe reduce the amount of time that our students sit in bus seats and also maximize the efficiency that we have as an organization to make sure our routes are running smoothly, efficiently, and we have less conflicts and double routes. Fifth, we look very closely at our socioeconomic balance across the district. Our district is diverse in many ways. And socioeconomic balance is a critical piece of this conversation too. <clears throat> so we look very closely at those indicators. Six, and very important, we look to minimize the change for our students um, and try to align as close as we can with our current attendance areas. As it stands now, every child in our district, if they stay with us from kindergarten to graduation, will have four transitions within their educational trajectory. When you then couple that with a possible redistricting piece, 
that can really change a child's experience. And I know some of our students have had that experience with the elementary redistricting processes. So our goal really is to minimize that change and we don't want to create any um, additional ripple effect in a child's experience. Seven, our goal is to attempt to maintain the consistency of our feeder system so that those students that are in areas that attend Grove City High School or Central Crossing um, or Franklin Heights, that we don't change the feeder system drastically as we look at the boundary planning for our middle grades. And finally, our goal is to help maintain open enrollment or what we know as special permission options. There are a lot of questions about will we give consideration to students that are currently in seventh grade at Pleasant View. Our goal would be to help minimize that impact and to work collaboratively with our school, work collaboratively with our parents, and see where we can find some special permission opportunities for students. At this presentation tonight, we are going to consider your feedback as an absolute and important and invaluable part of our process. We have been able to meet with the Pleasant View staff twice, and we've also had an opportunity to meet with some parents. This meeting serves as an additional opportunity to garner feedback. We wanted to share with you this evening too some of the important pieces and uh, feedback and questions that we've received from staff and also community members as we've shared our initial ideas. First, we've had questions about will there be special consideration given to the current seventh graders that will be impacted at Pleasant View Middle School? And the answer is yes. Our goal is to work collaboratively to minimize that impact. We've received feedback. That there are some students that are excited about the potential of attending a new middle school and there are others that would really like to stay at Pleasant View. And our goal is to work collaboratively with Principal Harmon and to look at ways that we can maybe offer some options. That couples with, you know, could we grandfather out those students that only have one year left and would like to stay? Absolutely, we're gonna consider those things. Transportation may be a variable that we can't, you know, overcome. It may be that if a child wants to stay at Pleasant View that we have to work with the family to see if they could secure transportation because we may not be able to provide it. But we can look at those on an individual basis. The good news is that our number of disruptions in this process is relatively small. We're looking at you know approximately 150 students so that allows us to be a little more personalized in our approach. We had questions if we could consider keeping the intermediate school cohorts of kids together like our Franklin Woods and Gallery Ridge families and absolutely we looked at that and I think that you'll see uh, at least one of our options that honors that in totality. Um, we had great feedback from our staff regarding diversity and socioeconomic status as well as our English language learners and how that would be impacted in terms of services at the building level. And we've actually done some digging um, with our data and we're able to provide some of those numbers to you tonight to be able to give you um, a little bit more information that will help impact maybe um, you know, the direction that you give us as a district. This slide shows our current middle school zones. So if you look at the top in the orange color, that is actually the N is for Norton Middle School. When you look at the green area, that is Pleasant View Middle School. When you look at the blue down at the bottom of the slide, that is Jackson Middle School. When you look at the red, that is Brook Park. And when you see the F in the purple, that is Finland Middle School. And these are our current boundaries. This slide is our current boundary denoted by color and you can still see the letters there for each one of our five middle schools, but this shows the distribution of our students. If you notice Pleasant View Middle School's area, how sparsely populated and how widespread and dispersed our families and our students live. So as you can imagine, that is an area when we're looking at transportation and transportation efficiencies, that's definitely an area that we looked at as we look at distribution, okay? But again, this is our current boundary marking and again, these are our five different middle schools based on the distribution of students within each one of those zones. As we discussed earlier in the presentation, we looked at important variables and parameters and decision-making criteria as we look at the students that would be impacted in any of our boundary decisions. So this slide shows you our current student enrollment under the current boundaries. And you can see that for each one of the middle schools that could be impacted, Brook Park, Norton, and Pleasant View Middle School, you can see the total number of students that are enrolled by grade level, or that would be feeding into that particular middle school, and also then the representation based on percentage of the economic disadvantagement. So when we look at that balance of economic status and we look at the sustainability of enrollment, we don't wanna just look at the current numbers or what's in the intermediate 
pathway, we want to also be looking at what our kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth grade numbers look like as we think about sustainability and as we balance enrollment across our middle schools. And this is very important for future planning because we, if we only look at the incoming seventh and eighth graders, pictured here as, as current seventh and sixth graders, we're, we're not going to get the whole story. We have to make sure to go down further and make sure we don't set ourselves up for uh, any type of imminent redistricting after that. We want to make sure that we make it, as, as Dr. Lusher said, sustainable uh, for, for years to come. This slide shows a draft of what could potentially be an option for the adjustment of our boundaries. Now, please don't let the color be misleading or misguided in any way. Remember that when we looked at those distribution maps, how sparsely populated some of the current Pleasant View, View land areas are. So in this map, you can see that Brook Park really begins to then absorb some of that sparsely populated area to the south of our district. And you'll see that Pleasant View, again, is cinched up in terms of the geographic boundaries and some of our transportation pieces um, as you look at this option. Believe it or not, in this uh, lar large area that would be a, a transition to Brook Park, there's only about 120 some kids in that area. Uh, it's just, uh, as Dr. Lusher said, it's a, it's a very sparsely populated area. And uh, in, a, in an attempt to use more uh, existing boundaries that we already have within the district, this actually coincides with Darbydale's uh, current boundary to the north. So it will be uh, ki the students that go to Darbydale, all the students that will go to Darbydale in the Pleasant View area would then be transitioned to Brook Park. And that encompasses also the, uh, at the intermediate level, the Hayes students that currently go to Pleasant View, as well as the Park Street students and some of the Holt Crossing students. To the north in the, uh, nor in the part, portion that we go to North Middle School, it's a much smaller area because it's much more densely populated. There are only about 40 students in that area. It's comprised of uh, several neighborhoods and apartment complexes that are actually physically located the closest to Norton. And no new uh, uh, catchments or uh, sequences of four schools would be, uh, would be created from that. Another important thing is high schools. Uh, anyone who would be transitioned from Pleasant View to Norton are inevitably Westland students, and any students that are, would be transitioned from Pleasant View to Brook Park are Central Crossing students. We certainly wouldn't want anyone going from Brook Park to Westland or from Norton to Cent Central Cross. We want to keep those high school boundaries consistent. This slide shows distribution of our students and their families uh, under option one. You saw a similar slide when we looked at our current middle school boundaries. Please notice in this slide that you see the letters NP for the new Pleasant View Middle School and NB for the new Beulah Park Middle School to give you a sense of proximity. One of the things that's important to note when you look at the distribution of our families is also not only how far our students are traveling to school, but then how the new buildings will impact some of the routes and some of the optics. There could be some students that currently with our boundaries are passing one middle school to attend another and vice versa. And this really does highlight the, the sparseness of, of the population in the southwestern portion of our school district in the Pleasant View area. So it, while it is a big area of land on the previous slide, it's, it's purely land based, right? You can see it's a large area of land that would be moved over to, to Brook Park, the new Beulah Park. Uh, it, it actually is not a, a large number of students. It's only about 120 some. And, and you can just see how, how those are so spread out compared to maybe the portions of Pleasant View further to the north. As we discussed earlier in the presentation, it's important to look at many levels of criteria as we think about these options for our students. One area we wanted to really focus on is what would the school level impact be for families? With option one, this plan consolidates the feeder paths to our middle school goes from five to three, including Holt Crossing, Galloway Ridge, and Franklin Woods. The number of students in the composition therein would include 126 students that would transition from Pleasant View Middle to Brook Park Middle. Inclusive of that would be 11 English language learners. We had that specific question from staff. And then we would also transition 38 students from Pleasant View to Norton Middle School and we would only be impacting three English language lear learners and their services. This slide shows student enrollment information based on the outcomes of option one. You'll notice grades K through eight 
and you'll see the total student enrollment for each one of those respective grade levels that feed into Brook Park, Norton, and Pleasant View Middle School. With option one, you'll notice that the end in mind for Pleasant View is reduced to where we would like to see our enrollment number. Still a little bit higher than Norton and Brook Park, but we've greatly reduced from what was current enrollment at 910 students. Additionally, you'll see economic disadvantaged status, which is located in percentiles on the chart. We looked at this to make sure there wasn't a significant change to the composition of our students. When you compare this enrollment slide to the current enrollment slide, you will notice in some cases a three or a four percent change in our economic status of students. This is considered a null change when you look at data sets. Anything less than 5% is not considered a significant change. So when asked the question, does option one significantly change the economic composition of our students at Pleasant View, the answer can be supported with data and the answer is no. We'll now transition to option two and discuss some of the differences that are presented here as a potential option for your feedback. So with the move of the new Brook Park to be incoming Buell Park and the new Pleasant View, uh, Brook Park's located to the southeast of the, the new Buell Park is located to the southeast of the new Pleasant View building. So we had a couple options, you know, do we want to try and pull students from the south to try and bring them into Brook Park? or more from the east to bring them to Park You saw option one is pulling them from the south. This is more from the east. Uh, believe it or not, it's uh, approximately the exact same number of students, around 120 students. See that large area we had in option one compared to these smaller areas in option two. They're just so much more densely populated. Uh, the area north to the, of, the new, of the new Pleasant View and then the area to, in the very northwest uh, part bordering Finland Middle School, the northwest part of the Finland area, uh, that was Pleasant View before and is now Brook Park. Those two areas are the ones that would now be attending the new Brook Park. Again, much smaller geographically, but much more densely populated. They're the ones that would be going to that new Buell Park. But in trying to achieve balance, we definitely want to have some urban, suburban, and rural areas. In the Norton example, this time we went with the uh, uh, more rural areas that would end up going to Norton on the western part there, the northwestern part of the current Pleasant View. Uh, and, and as big as that area is, it's actually half the number of students that we had uh, prior going to Norton. This was closer to around 20 students, whereas the other one was closer to 40. Uh, this consolidates some of the areas of Alton Hall into, uh, into going to Galloway Ridge and to Norton and to Westland High School. And again, here is a distribution map for option two. You can see the sparseness of the population and where our students are located in each one of their respective communities. So yeah, that, that sparseness in that Norton area this time in the northwestern part, uh, you, you can see there's, there's very little there. In fact, most of it's concentrated in a, in a single neighborhood for those 20 students. And then, and then likewise on the eastern part that would be, uh, would be going to Beulah Park in this example, you can see how much more uh, densely populated it is in those two areas uh, on the far western edge of the Finland Middle School area, just to the west of it. For option two, as we look at school level impact, there is a reduction in our feeder schools from five to four. So Holt Crossing, Galloway Ridge, Park Street, and Hayes students would continue to feed into Pleasant View Middle School. The number of students impacted, so we would have 121 students that would transition from Pleasant View to Brook Park. 19 of those students would be English language learners. And then 18 students would transition from Pleasant View Middle School to Norton Middle School. On this slide, we're looking at student enrollment impact on option two. And once again, we've looked at the longitudinal grade levels, kindergarten through eighth grade for Brook Park Middle, Norton Middle, and Pleasant View Middle School. You will notice that the totality of our enrollment looks very similar and like to both our current enrollment and then with option one, you saw the reduction in the sustainability for Pleasant View. You see that same reduction here in our overall enrollment for Pleasant View. Additionally, you see the economic status or economic disadvantagement percentages. And again, with this option, we were in a range between three to 4% in um, any type of impact on that particular variable. So when asked the question, 
And option two, is there a significant change to the composition of our economic status or economic disadvantagement for students within option two? The answer is no. We've covered a great deal of information that can be technical, confusing, and sometimes just very difficult to understand and digest. But now we need your feedback. And our goal is to create a process that honors as many voices as we possibly can, but ultimately goes back to those parameters and those important features of our decision-making process that have served this district so well in previous redistricting processes. Here on this slide, you see option one, and option two. The link takes you to a form where you can provide your feedback. It's not a vote, it's a poll, and it's a form for you to fill out to give us, you know, again, which one of these options you feel the most comfortable with, and then ultimately allows us to get some more insight and feedback from you as our overall process. But again, you see option one, you see option two, and then if you want to click through any of the slides or go through this presentation again, you will have access to that at any time. Our next steps and timeline. We've had staff meetings. We are hosting parent meetings. We will take all the feedback that we receive from these important voices and we'll aggregate that information. We'll look very closely at the feedback and then we will come back and provide our overview of that feedback and then ultimately what those options look like for us as a district. It is our goal that by February we'll make a formal recommendation to the Board of Education and that will be part of a board agenda in February. It's very important that we work through this process in an efficient way because our buildings will start scheduling and will be in a high prioritized mode to be able to plan for the 2022-23 school year. So timing is very important. Again, we value your feedback. Hope that you will click on that link in the previous slide to provide your voice as part of this process. And then we will take those recommendations and look at our options and then come back to these groups in January with an idea of where we think we're headed based on all of this information and this informed process. We'd like to thank you for taking the time to partner to listen and to be involved in this very important process for our students, for our staff, and for our communities. At this time, Robert and I are going to transition and ask that you provide any questions that you have to us. And again, those can be submitted on the form that you can complete for feedback, um, or you can email us directly with those questions and we will do our very best to answer those questions and provide responses to you in a timely way.